All right, so we are on our third iteration of the podcast today. I'm joined with our usual co-host, Cypher5, and we have a special guest today. This is BZ Tommy. You guys might recognize him from Xbox as Kairu the Great or on the stream as BZ Tommy. Say what's up, dude. What's up, guys? And this is our first guest on the podcast so far, and we've been talking over some names, so we want to get your guys' feedback um, in the YouTube comments, wherever you guys are listening or message on stream. We've been thinking about a couple different names here, and I think one that's kind of a front runner right now is the Final Circle. And we've been going over a bunch of different names. So, if, and what do you, what are, what are the ones you guys want to put out there in the world, uh, the podcast world, for people to kind of vote on or talk about anything? Did you, did you guys Google that one to see if that was taken? The Final the, Circle. The Final Circle isn't taken. Yeah, the final story is not. Um, I mean, we did talk about the A and R report or the RNA report. Um, was pretty good, uh, unfortunate. But I think that's really kind of like the front runner right now. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we, we were thinking Player Five, but that's taken as a podcast. Um, I was just calling the them like the BFF Blitz for now because it was like Blitz Five and Friends. But since it's us together, I think we should you know have a different name for this. So yeah, I mean, even, even though, like kind of how like, Andrew said, like, you know, like uh, the final circle may not always be like relevant, like because maybe battle royales may disappear or whatever. Yeah. But like it's, it's still like somewhat of a catchy name, I think. Yeah, it like, is. It is very y- it's, yeah. like, simple. You know what I mean, yeah, it, is, it yeah. is still a very catchy name. That's true. I like And that. I think it's like it's people will still know or like eventually it'll just be like an origin story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's where we kind of started from, um, from, you know, playing a lot of PUBG and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any interesting names, let us know down in the comments below on YouTube or send us a message or follow us on Twitter. You guys know where to find us. You can follow me at Blitz5. Andrew, I think, just switched his Twitter. And what's yours, Tom? BZ Tommy? Z underscore Tommy. BZ underscore For Tommy. this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> until, until you switch it. Ever, ever changing names. Yeah, very nice. And I guess that starts off pretty well because you we were making a joke about Tom, BZ Tommy, switching his name all the time. We wanted to start off on our first podcast episode. We kind of talked about our origin stories and how our gamer tags were created on Blitz 5, Andrew's Cypher 5, and we went into all that. So if you guys want to listen to that, you can go into the first episode. So we figured we should start this off with BZ Tommy going into how he created his usernames, I should say with an S, plural. <laughs> the man said plenty of usernames Multiple. over the years. So I don't know where you want to start with that. Um I mean I I guess uh so we're just starting with just just the the gamer tag right now. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, we'll, gaming. yeah, sure yeah. We'll start with the, the gamer tag first, yeah. So I guess it uh the the first time we ever really needed a gamer tag, right, was was Halo 2 when when we first got Xbox uh Yeah, that's Xbox what we were Live. talking about. You didn't really need a gamer tag before then, right? I don't remember ever having no, to create one. I mean, not anything worth it. Screen name, like on AIM. But other than that, like an alias wasn't really a thing at the time, you know? Mm, true, yeah, screen, um, name, sure. screen name, that's about yeah. it. Yeah, good point. So, so uh, a week or two before Halo 2, um, and uh, I remember I wanted to go get Xbox Live, uh, you know, before the game came out, obviously, so we, we could play as soon as it came out. Yeah, no, I think me um, and you got it around and, the same time. Right, right before Halo Two, yeah. Yep. Just, I mean, this is back when like everyone had dial up, like like high speed internet was still pretty new. So I, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll never forget. I I didn't really know the process, so I just went. Me and my dad went to uh, went to Circuit City, uh, and we just went <laughs> and, <throwback>. and, <laughs> and bought like bought like the uh, the surfboard Motorola modem, like the you know the 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 famous surfboard with the standby button on it. Um, mm. I remember. And like well. I just bought it and like we brought it home and like i just like hooked it up to like the cable jack and like thought like that's all it was you know like i thought that's how you got a high speed internet um but, <laughs> but but come to find out you know you actually had to like call comcast and, and all that that's um hilarious. so i i get it all set up and and i think it was uh crimson skies was the game that i had because it was like that and, Meg- and megasol were the only two xbox live games oh, oh yeah, i forgot megasol. about megasol we talked about this pretty much so yeah, kind of skip Sky, ahead. We, we, we talked about like yeah, the whole origin of like Xbox Live in the first podcast and stuff, but I, we forgot about Mech Assault for sure. For sure, I, I'm pretty sure because uh, Antonio was he actually gave me um, or Killer Castro would I mean I guess he doesn't really game with us anymore, but <laughs> he, he had an extra copy of Crimson uh, Crimson Sky, so he gave it to me so I could hook up my Xbox Live. Wow. So I actually my my first name was Silent Sniper. 
Um, and I guess it kind of stems back from like when we used to play like Ghost Recon split screen back in the day. Mm. I always I always liked like the sniper dude. Um, I don't I don't know where I got the silent from. Um, but but I was always obsessed with like sniping and like when we played airsoft, like when we were, you know, I, I always loved sniping. I mean, I guess every kid loves being the sniper. Um, sure. yeah, that, that's kind of where, yeah. where the name came from, Silent Sniper. Um, and then 319, uh, which I pretty much used. I used that on all my aim screen names, but it was my two favorite athletes. Alan Irison was number three and Keyshawn Johnson was number 19. So I always put them together um, and I still use that number to this day. Um, and that's kind of how I got got my uh, my first gamer tag, Silent Sniper 319. 319, also my birthday. Nice. Shout out to March 19th. Powerful That's really your birthday? birthday awesome. Oh, yeah, true. That's yeah, my birthday date. But yeah. that name didn't stick for too long, right? How long did you have that name? Yeah, so um, I probably had that name for about a year um, at max. Um, and, and as Ray always makes fun of me, anytime I get into something, <laughs> I, I go like 150 uh, you know, percent at it. So yeah, as soon yeah, as I figured out... Like 10,000. <laughs> <thing called MLG, laughs> um you know, I, I had to figure out like a cool name because everyone just had like short one word names. And yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, it was like name. Ogre <laughs> and all these people, right? Like back in the day in uh, T squared, right? All those old school guys. The Ogres, uh, Fonzie. I mean, I, I could go on mm. forever, but I doubt anyone would even know who any of these people are. Um, but they always had like a cool, like simple name. Um, and I remember, like, the thing back then was, like, XX, your name, XX, or, like, XIX, the name oh, XIX. yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I did that, dude. Mm-hmm. I did – I forgot about this. I did X Blitz 5X on some things for a while when Blitz 5 was taken. I look back at that, and I, like, cringe at the X thing, you know? So um, so I, I remember sitting in, in, in my back room, and uh, we're, like, I had my Xbox and all that, and I just started, like, Googling, like, cool names. And uh, somehow I, I found myself – on like a Japanese translator, like English or Japanese translator. <laughs> yeah, I remember being with you doing this. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like put in like kill and um, just cause you know, like, you know, you kill things in video games. So I, I typed in the word kill and uh, Kiru or Kairu came. I still honestly don't even know how to properly pronounce it. Some people say Kiru, some people say Kairu, uh, but it means death by sword in Japanese, which kind of fit perfectly because the, everyone was obsessed with the sword in Halo 2. Um, Oh, so that is kind of cool. I was like, it's a simple four letter word. Um, and then that's where, uh, that, that, that's where Kiru came from, which is, has been my name ever since I've had different variations of it. I had like, sir, Kiru, Kairu V2, XX, Kairu XX. Now I have like, Kairu the Great. Why so many? What <laughs> happened to all these? Sometimes it was like, you know, I, I would go like a year without playing and then I'd like forget like my Microsoft login and then, wow. but, um, I don't know. I wonder if you, you know, can I, cover that original one I somehow. Major, well, I actually, um, you know, like a year or two ago, uh, they did like the big purge where like they deleted all the video game or gamer tags that like weren't used anymore. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, think, I, I forgot. I actually that. was able to recreate Silent Sniper three on nine, so I still have that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a memento. You would do that, yeah, like, like steal just, it back. Yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I guess it's not it's not that cool of a story, but it, it stems from Halo Two, like the you know using the sword, and uh, it, it means um, death death by sword, as I said. But the the whole premise of me changing it was to kind of fit into like that competitive gaming short and sweet gamer tag to you know to sound cool. Yeah. No, I mean I I understand that because I feel like when I made mine, I was just like I want a short small name because I and now like it's a badge of honor when you have a short name because everyone has these long names and numbers and stuff like that like six yeah. characters is a lot it was a lot back then four characters was like a lot back then <laughs> almost too you know what i mean now it's like nothing people have these long I, names i do uh you guys were, were talking about it on, on i think the uh, the first one is when you guys went over your names right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when i was listening to that how you guys uh like you have the same gamer tag from all the way back then like i kind of wish i had that because like i'm like five emails deep and like i know i, I know even, yeah <laughs> And we were there from the start with us too. I feel like you yeah. uh, definitely missed out on that. I don't know why I, I care, but I love that. It's like the same name forever. It's yeah. crazy. It's, it's hard because so you got to fight for that name too. Like on everything to make it cross platform. <laughs> it's been oh, really true. kind of like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I somehow have it for like everything. Even Twitch, I think my name is Cypher5. 
Wow. Really yeah. Good. Someone, someone messaged me a long time ago, uh, one of our friends from high school and was like, Hey, are you on PlayStation network? And they're like, I just came across a blitz five and I'm like, dude, it's not me, man. Like I'm never going to get that name on the, the PlayStation network. Yeah, that's why you can't convert to PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just crazy. But, uh, for the most part, I've been able to get Blitz 5, but a lot of times it gets taken pretty fast. I, Blitz is a really popular word, and actually, to the point, because of all the football references and stuff like that, I was yeah. like looking at trying to buy Blitz5.com, and a normal website costs it can cost like 20 or $30 to buy the name, and then you pay every year for it, mm-hmm. but the Blitz 5 domain costs like $5,000 because it's such a popular word phrase, like Blitz, and then also with the number five, um, that it's it costs so much money just to buy it outright, the name. Because it's so highly trafficked right. or highly searched, isn't that crazy? Yeah, I remember that oh, game yeah. too. I'm sorry, my bad. No, go ahead. <laughs> is, I is that because the, the uh, football oh, game oh. Blitz? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. NFL Blitz game. was really popular. A lot of people think I get my name off NFL Blitz. I think Tom thought that for a second I, that I had I my like name. Like a I thought that's where you got it from. Was oh man, that. a lot of people think that, but I did. I did play that game a lot as a child. That that was one of my favorite games. At Who the time. didn't play that game? That yeah, was an was, awesome game. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> I think um, I would run on fire and they'd slam each other on the head. Like it was like a violent version of of like Madden. <laughs> yeah, that and um, NH- NHL hits was like its counterpart for the hockey. And yeah. I don't know if you guys ever played that one, but that one was fantastic. It was so much fun. That version was great. Uh, no, nah, I never played that. What was that? I, I know there was like the arcade. NFL Blitz, but we had it on N64, right? That's what we used to always play in the basement. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was N64. I don't know if it ever made it past any other consoles. I think they stopped making NFL Blitz like in the early 2000s. Yeah, I don't think it made it to the like Xbox 360 generation for sure. No, I don't even know if it made it, it like, to the Xbox generation. Yeah, well, I know what happened is eventually. This like, is like, uh, uh, my bad. No, 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 it's good. Don't worry about it. Um, no worries. If anything, it's just weird. You're right. When uh, when someone when you stop start talking, sometimes it comes in a little quiet. So just keep going with your thought, and, and um, we'll, we'll hear you. But um, what I remember is they um, the NFL EA bought out the NFL license. That has to be ending soon because they bought like a 20 year license on the NFL rights, and that was mm-hmm. like in um or whatever how long it was. I don't know, but that was in like early 2000s, and that's why they stopped making all those games, NFL Blitz, and also there used to be a 2K football game. So that's why they stopped uh, making 2K. all the competitors. Yeah. yeah. And I used to like the 2K series. Yeah. Tom and I did more than EA's Madden. But then now they, they had to stop making them because of that. But doesn't take two own 2K? The 2K series for basketball? Or they only do basketball? It's just basketball, the rights. There's two. The EA and 2K still do NBA games to this day. But EA bought out the rights for the NFL. So only one. Oh, NBA, only, only NFL. Only okay. they can do the NFL. Gosh, I never even knew there's two basketball versions, the 2K and then the EA version. Yeah, I, no, no I think everyone's all about the 2K version. I don't think the NBA, the EA one, I don't even know if they still make it, but it was going on for a long time. One is, I think it's like NBA Live is That's EA, all. right? Yeah. And then 2K is um, the one that like, everybody loves, the, the 2K yeah. basketball series. Like if you're which a basketball Which is take fan. two. Yeah, which gotcha. is take two. Yeah. Yeah. 2K football, which, uh, which turned into the ESPN football, like those came out on Dreamcast because I remember that's that's yeah. mm-hmm. back when like play sports mm-hmm. game, and yeah. then Xbox, and then they switched it. They still kept the 2K for basketball, but they switched to ESPN for the football. And then they had like the first person view. Remember that you could like play like inside the helmet. Yeah, they did. Do oh that. yeah, that was a weird thing. That, that was that, definitely weird. But cool. that's red. It was like within the first year or two of original Xbox coming out. Wow. And that's then, crazy. I, mean, I forgot I, I, about I, that. Kids will never know about those days. The 2K football games. You have like your mansion to like get all the trophies in it and stuff. That was like the story mode. <laughs> it's crazy because some of those games are honestly better than like the current versions of Madden now. It's kind of sad. I know. They make it so complicated to play a football game now. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, come on. The favorite thing to do was just create a, create a character, put like 99 on everything. And then like, uh, like in, in a basketball game, I would just like shoot like threes the entire game. Or I remember on like 2K football, I would turn off like defense penalties and then I would just like go on side. Oh, I remember that. The quarterback. Yeah, we we would do that playing together. We would play co-op together, and we would just like run across the. We would like be next to the quarterback when he was hiking the ball and just hit him. <laughs> it's crazy what you do as a kid because it's so it's so pointless. Like you're just wasting your own time, but you get so much amusement out of that stuff when you're a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Playing I remember playing like the basketball games on like Sega, like when I was really little. 
Which is like, kind of crazy. Like old school, like that. the but Sega the, Genesis or something? Yeah, like Sega Genesis. Oh, I don't even remember playing think, games back then, but I definitely did. What the, um, What was the one I played on? It was on Super Nintendo. It was kind of like Blitz, but it was a basketball version. It was like three on three. Wasn't oh, there was like, it like the NBA NBA Super Jams or something? Or, or NBA Street? Or different? It was... No, it wasn't NBA Street. That's later on. I think what? it was NBA Jams. NBA... It was an arcade thing as well. Also, yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. has like a big like kind of cult following. NBA Jams, like people reference that all the time. If you Google that, it, it's probably NBA Jams. Really? Yeah. This is I remember following. Uh, uh, not cult following, team. but like people always like kind of talk about it. It's like a nostalgic part of like the '90s mm -hmm. was NBA Jams, like the video game series. Like it has, like people look back at it with like really fond fond memories. I guess it's like iconic in the video game yeah. world. Yeah, I can see that. I get it. From like half court and stuff. Yeah, because it was the, like the first game that was like funky like that, where you could you could dunk from really far away and and do stuff like that. Oh, was that the, the one where the guy you shoot like from yeah, like they you shoot far and be like from downtown? I think yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was always funny. I remember I, I was with the, the Bulls and the three person team. It was Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Robin. That I'm, was the the three person team that it would be. Yeah, I'm Googling right now. I want to see, is it three on three? I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure that's why the, this is. And it was made by Midway. Uh, Man, that's such a, oh wow, Midway. Is that even a company anymore, huh? Not really, I don't think. They're probably going to out. We're one of, the, the, one of the companies that like rolled into I, Blizzard. Oh, uh, I don't remember. I think Midway used to make those like action games, like with the shooter guns. Uh, Who was the company that made Command and Conquer? That was West uh, Westwood Studios, West and they got bought out by EA. And actually, That's there's like a huge video on that on the line. So like, kind of go on a tangent, but like, there's a huge video of like the fall of Westwood Studios and like how Com Command and Conquer got like screwed over, or like messed up because EA bought them, and they just had so high of expectations to churn out those games, and it just kind of screwed them over. The quality. Wow, when like greatly. when like those games are something you come out with like every year, like EA probably yeah they them too. Or something yeah, like they that. wanted them to do that, and they just the quality dropped so hard, and and the company in Westwood was pretty small, um, and they just couldn't uh, keep up. Like Red Alert Two is like the last one, and then they wanted more and more, and it was such a good selling game. They wanted expansions, and then the Red Alert Three, and I think they just couldn't keep up, so it kind of just fell by the wayside. Yeah. So kind of it's kind of sad. It was a great game, one of the best games. I I loved that game when I was younger. Do the video game Red Alert Two. And and Yuri's Revenge came out, and that's what we played, right? Yeah, yeah, we played. We I spent remember a playing lot of it with Steve. That. And, yeah, and then they came out with Generals, mm, and which was okay. And then it was Red Alert Three because that came out in like systems and stuff too. Remember? Yeah, I I think Red Alert yeah. Two was the last really good one, and then Generals came out, and I was like, mm, this was, is it, weird. was General and the then, ones where you need to have like a pretty strong computer at the time to play it because it was like more three yeah. D. Right, and I feel like yeah. that's where like it lost me because at the time my computer like wasn't good enough to play that version really well. I think my computer barely played it. I remember that being like an issue. I was like, "This kind of sucks." Like, it was much more graphic, like intensive. You know what's crazy is that like I remember that it took like nine hundred megabytes of processing power. Could you imagine? Like nowadays, that we have like i7 processors and we don't even like we have like 3.2 gigabytes like just you know chilling oh yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's there's 900 megabytes or something I more power than that. yeah exactly <laughs> it's kind of crazy yeah, now people are playing about. like pubg mobile that looks like better than sometimes the xbox version I'm kidding but like you know the, yeah. what they do with mobile games now is out of this world com yeah. yeah compared to what we used to play back in the day uh, oh it's unreal just a little origin trivia for you ray do you remember what our clan name was in riddler 2 wasn't it like the the Blood Ravens or something like that? It was the Blood Angels. The Blood Angels. I don't the, know why that sticks with me. But I just uh, remember that. At one time, we we had we had moved to the Blood Ravens and then the Chaos Holders and the Blood. I like the the Blood Ravens is such a cool name to this day. Um, but uh, and so was the Chaos yeah. Holders. So I don't know if I ever played with you guys in Riddler. I played a lot of it. I played with Steve a couple times, and that was about it. But I mostly would play like randomly by myself. Uh, we played in Steve's old house. Yeah, we didn't really, I, I mean, you, like, could, you could play online, but we more played, like, we liked playing with each connecting other. Connecting to each other, yeah. yeah connecting to that each was other. way more fun, because then you'd give each other, like, let each other build, and, like, otherwise people were just, like, rushing hard. You're like, oh, this kind of sucks. Yeah, people <laughs> were really intense with those games. Yeah, they were. And we were also, like, 10 or 12. Yes, yeah, time, exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. We weren't, like, playing like that. We wanted to build some cool stuff and, like, you know, like, have fun. Yeah. A little bit different of a mentality.
Yeah, those games are fantastic, yeah. though. It's kind of a bummer that that video game series took such a dump uh, over time. Yeah, I mean, StarCraft is still huge, so it, it, if they could really like revive it, it would probably do well. I think they just have such a bad rep right now. That's the problem. Yeah, and they made a bad, uh, a bunch of bad games. I remember like you bought one, which I think I still have, or I might have like eventually got rid of. But like I had your version of Command and Conquer for one of the Xboxes that you like left in my dorm room one time, and it was yeah. like, not that they, they tried to do it on the Xbox and it didn't really come out that well. Oh yeah, uh, Tiberium Sun or something like that. Tiberium Twilight. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I remember I bought Red Alert 3 in college and they were like, the guy sold it to me at GameStop and he was like, yeah, there's like a downloading issue with the game. So like, if it doesn't work, you got to bring it back. And I remember I got it, it worked okay for me, but there was like definitely issues with it. And like that, I remember that was like a huge issue apparently at launch and like people were just like so upset about it. Cause like if you download the game and like, it doesn't even work. And that was before like digital downloads too. So you had to have the disc. It was just a nightmare. I remember that. Oh so. yeah. That probably also hurt them huge, you know. If I remember correctly, like Red Alert Three was supposed to be like, because like like how we said before, like Red Alert Two was probably at like the the height of its prime, mm -hmm. and then like Generals kind of killed it a little bit, and then like Red Alert Three was supposed to be like the revival, and then it just like crashed and burned. Yeah, I think that that yeah, it just did so bad, especially like with the download issue for sure, and then the game call the game probably just wasn't as good as everyone thought it would be. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Too? I, I'll keep going, Tom. If you I was a, and by then, if you were a PC gamer, you pretty much played like WoW or Counter Strike at that point. Yeah, or yeah. you're playing StarCraft. StarCraft One was big until like StarCraft Two came out, and then that was like how much light later was StarCraft Two than StarCraft One? Like a huge difference. StarCraft yeah. One was out for a while. Yeah, and that was like a popular game. And now StarCraft Two is out, and they have like the three expansions. But that the three expansions have been out, I guess, probably about. I want to say eight years or 10 years now. That's and that game right. is still really heavily played. Isn't there Star I thought there was <laughs> like, StarCraft 3 exactly. or something. I, I never played on um, the StarCraft series. It just seems really, three? I it just looked kind have of it, like right behind me. Oh, no, you're right. It's, StarCraft. It, there's, I just Googled it. It's like the status, why Blizzard won't release StarCraft 3. So I guess you're right. It's just been two this whole time. Is that really the case? Oh, sorry. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right? I just I just punched my uh, mic stand. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the end of high school because i remember yeah when halo started dying down in the mlg series mm -hmm. starcraft 2 was like what kept it alive until like call Duty and all that blew up well i think that was but still yeah, starcraft some... 1 because it, it says here starcraft 2 came out in 2010 does that make sense yeah oh that makes sense that was eight years right yeah that makes perfect sense to me because i remember buying it and i remember um buying... she, that, that, that oh, makes my sense because halo halo 2 was 2004 2008 and then the first yeah. couple of years of Halo 3 were still pretty big. But then like when Reach came out, which was probably around that time is when Halo died down. So I, I guess that doesn't make sense, like 2010. Yeah. I wonder why they're not releasing StarCraft 3. But it, it's kind of funny because isn't it the same studio that makes StarCraft? It is um, it is Blizzard, right? Or I thought it was uh, Blizzard, yeah. It is Blizzard, but don't uh, they make see. Diablo too? Is it? No. Is it, who makes Diablo? Yeah, Diablo is Blizzard, isn't it? Diablo's all, though, dude, everything is, yeah, all that stuff is Blizzard. Yes. So uh, think Starcraft. about Diablo, Diablo 1 to Diablo 2, bro. That was such yeah. a long gap. People I never, played Diablo 1, I remember, when I was in college, and I was like, this game is like 10 years old right now. I know. <laughs> it's, it's crazy it's how kinda... long-lasting those games are, and I have honestly haven't really played many of them. I mean, I didn't nah. really play Diablo. I, I never mm -hmm. really played StarCraft. I, I played World of Warcraft for, like six Never. months maybe and then i tried it again i mean i know tom got into that for a little bit but did you ever play that andrew world of warcraft no no i never was um into it like that i never got it could get into that game i'm kind of glad i didn't yeah remember, it, remember we used to set up in steve's basement like all of our computers like one well, that like six months that we played yeah for sure we play all i mean i played like uh crackhead for like six months and then i like luckily i mean i don't know if it's luckily but i got off and i, I think i was kind of happy i did um and then i tried to start it up a couple more times but i know you guys took it pretty seriously for a while it is a very addicting game you see how people it's very addicting yeah and it's a lot of fun you play with your oh, friends for sure. doing missions and it's just like a giant forever never-ending co-op game so it's really it's really fun to play actually uh, i got back into it for a while like with dave because we when like 
when me and him used to go work out, like we would just go work out and then like go back to his house and just like play WoW for the rest of the day. Yeah, speaking of him, if you look, he's in the Discord. He he is playing World of Warcraft right now, and that's kind of what I wanted to bring it up because I've been oh, seeing yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of people play, and because they just released a new expansion, and mm-hmm. I think a lot of people said it like is back to like old school World of Warcraft, and I saw a big return of like a lot of people saying they're playing World of Warcraft. Like where I'd a- I'd ask people like, "Where have you been?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm playing WoW again." I'm like, "Dude, that's like being like on a drug, you know?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, I relapsed." I'm like, back <laughs> to "World of Warcraft." They again. made it for you, like, because uh, the biggest, like, especially now nowadays, the biggest like downfall or not downfall like game, but the biggest uh, like burden is paying fifteen dollars a month. Like that's like oh, crazy. It's I mean, oh, I thought it was ten a month. I thought it was five. No, it's fifty. It's, it was five a month. I'm like ninety nine percent sure it's fifteen dollars. Right, when month. we played, it definitely wow. wasn't fifteen. I don't think it was. I think it was ten, but maybe I'm wrong. Wow. In any case, 15? in any it's case, like so they, um, what, did they change that? Use like in game money to like buy like game tokens. So if you like farm enough, like you can like pay. <laughs> oh, oh wow! Damn. I don't they know didn't... exactly how it works, but you can like use like your gold to like pay for like game time or, or something like that. That's amazing. They have you so addicted to that game. You're mining gold and pay for the game. And <laughs> Yeah, I just remember like years ago, dude, this was like back when we were in college and World of Warcraft was the most played game in the world. You know, now since then, like games have eclipsed that. But they had 10 million active users. That means people that were paying them like every month and they were paying, I thought, $10 a month at the time. So if you do the math there, they were making $100 million a month, dude, off World of Warcraft, which is yeah. just... Just off the game I mean, subscription alone. That's crazy. Because then there's probably other it? things you could buy in the game, right? Like, was it kind of like... I never played it, so I have no idea, but you could um, There's kind of like microtransactions things. too, yeah. Like, in, there's an in-game currency that people use, but like Tom said, you could always kind of farm for it. So, I don't mm. know. But, you know, people sell money and make money like second lifestyle in, in World of Warcraft, just selling their stuff on like the market in there. Yeah, wouldn't like, people like items. build up these characters and sell them for like mad money, right? Yeah, da- Dave used to do that too. He used to sell, allegedly sell characters and stuff like that um, for money to people, you well, know, because uh, you don't want to grind. Uh, Here's the newest inside scoop. So it's free up until level 20 now. Okay. Uh, trial. Tom coming and in it's hot still, with information. But it is. It's uh, it's 14.99 monthly subscription fee. Wow. So it's still 15 bucks a month. Wow. That's a lot of money, man. <laughs> oh my god. That's a lot. I mean, it is like I guess equivalent to play, paying for like a Netflix. So if you really like it that much, and you're you know. It is like a Netflix subscription, but uh, that's still a lot of money. From like, it's crazy, like how they haven't like adapted yet, because like no, no other game you have to pay for online, no. like computer. I mean, at the time, I'm sure servers were kind of like it was servers were harder to come by and everything. So like the cost may have been like a huge equation for that game since it's uh, 100. Yeah, but I mean now it's different. Yeah, I mean Dude, nowadays that's like, servers, that's crazy. servers are. I mean they're still expensive when you're running a big video okay. game. But 20 bucks a month or a year? No. 15 times 12? You're paying like $180 a year. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I don't know if that's tax too, but it's definitely 180 something like that. Dude, what's what's crazy is, you know, and, and now that Activision, you know, like is merged with Blizzard, and it seems like they kind of like run like the a lot of the financial decisions probably, at least from like – you can kind of tell it seems like they're doing that. It's mm-hmm. Like, there's mm-hmm. no way they're gonna let that go. Even if even if they're like, oh, we could. There's no way because it's like yeah. guaranteed income. It's I crazy. wonder what the active users are now. You know, if there's a high active user count, then why would they? Uh, yeah, I don't blame them. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think it's at ten. I wonder if they have the information nah. on that. But it's crazy Probably to think not, because yeah. that was at one time the most played game, and that at one point when we were playing League of Legends back in like 2013 or 14. At that time, I had read that League just hit 75 million active users of people that were playing. Like, they logged in with, within million. one month. And wow. they've reached a point where they had hit almost any time you logged into the game, there wasn't less than like three to five million players. There, at one point, when the game was so popular, like all across the world, there was always like three million players on. That's which crazy. Is, which is just an absurd, really, if you think about it. Oh, that's insane. That's a lot of people playing that game. I mean, they must be paying out the butt for servers. <laughs> I know. They just bleed money in servers. Like, the processing power is kind of like, that must be nuts. I mean, I wonder, like, how many people play that now? Like, did League, do you think League is still ex- as, like, not, no, no, not no. I think, popular, I think, still I think, up there. I, I think it's still really popular, but I think it probably peaked 
you know, now, and now like it, it also came in at a good time when like, like I said for a lot of people on us, like console kind of took a dump with like any good games. Like, so that's why yeah. we left console and we're playing mm -hmm. PC and uh, it, it reached such big global success. And now there's like other games, you know, like here's the yeah. storm and Fortnite. So I'm sure it had to, had to be, I mean, who knows, but I think that was probably around its peak. And what I want to know now is like, how would they would look at active players for Fortnite and like do you count like mobile players as the same as like console and PC players? Uh, because this says right mm -hmm. here, Googling that Fort Fortnite has seventy eight point three monthly players according to Epic. And that's gotta wow. be across all platforms. That's insane, man. The amount of people playing video games is extremely crazy. It's crazy, and those numbers are what you get when it's a free game. League of Legends free. Fortnite free, yeah. like you're not gonna get 78.3 million people playing when it's fifteen dollars a month. That would 78.3 million people aren't gonna do that. No, you can't do it anymore. No way. It, maybe it maybe ten years work. ago, like we were saying, but nowadays, absolutely not. No way. I just don't think ten million people. I don't think there's that many play people playing video games at the time. Video games have exploded over the last like five years. Like yeah, definitely over the last five. Yeah, it's actually a great like, a great topic for the podcast for sure. I mean, let's think about it. Like now we're moving into all these professional teams. Um, you have like, now it's going to be, uh, I can't even think of the word right now, but there's like, you know, what is it? The Dallas outlaws or whatever. Like there's actual like city. Dude, we got our know, e we got, teams. We, we got an esport oh, expert um, on the podcast. Yeah, I know. Hey, yo, what am I doing here? Tom, Tom explain, explain us. your background and how much you love esports and why you know everything about it. <laughs> Show your credentials, flash your resume here. <laughs> yeah, please. This isn't a nerdy podcast. Um, we need full, full front. I mean, I, you know, I, as as you guys know, I've been into esports since like Halo Two, um, and yeah, that's that's nice. honestly, I mean, anyone can can say that's where that's definitely not where like the start of esports is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously PC predates that um, with like remember like yeah. fatality, right? like back on like the G Four network. Oh yeah, the like best, Unreal, uh, like, oh, yeah. those games, yeah, for sure. For sure. But the I'm sure ever, Starcraft, the first Starcraft, yeah, definitely more so like you know in Asia than than here, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's definitely esports has always been huge. Just might have not not have been in the spotlight like it is now, but it was definitely huge, especially social media and all that helped it. But um, like the organizations that are all in esports now, like the well-known ones, I would say ninety-five percent of them are organizations that started out in Black Ops Two or Halo Two. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of migrated over to PC once they once they expanded in games like League of Legends and all that. But kind of going to what you were touching on, the Houston Outlaws. So that Houston, was, sorry. Um, yeah. So there's the Houston Outlaws and the Dallas Fuel. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm so, so I'm, I'm smiling those, because Tom, really, you, you have like no professional background in this, but you really do know. Like you're like actually, it's the Houston Outlaws. <laughs> I, I knew there was one of them. But wait, real quick, just, just for anyone that's under the age of 22, G4 that Tom mentioned was a TV network that was all video games and stuff like that that was on TV. I guess it got canceled a couple of years ago. But if you're under the age of like ago, 20 yeah. or 22, you, you probably wouldn't when know. When we grew G4 up, is. you would watch G4 all the time because it was cool yeah. that it was on TV. But yeah, we, yeah. we should go back to that in a, in later. But keep yeah, going, no, Tom. but keep going, Tom. Um, so that those are teams, obviously, in the uh, um, oh my god, what's the name of that game? Over uh, Overwatch, right? What's the name of the game? Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah Overwatch. Overwatch blew it up. Yeah, pretty big. But what do they call yeah. that? Like, um, it starts with a D. Ugh. But, huh, what are you saying? Uh, so that's actually um, Bl uh, Blizzard, I think, made Overwatch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an Activision game, yeah. So, so they kind of did it backwards, right? Like normally, like the fan base will create the esports like demand, mm -hmm. like for a game. So Overwatch, Overwatch kind of uh, did it, yeah. Like True. they did it like backwards, but their reason behind that is is they wanted to franchise the league. So obviously esports over the past mm. 15 years has been trying to, to kind of emulate what traditional sports does. Obviously there's, you know, differences, but they try to do it like League of Legends was the first one to kind of create like the season um, opposed to like just doing tournaments. And then what Overwatch did, they took it one step forward to where they wanted to franchise it. So all those teams are owned by traditional, by like the most, well, the, sorry, let me start over. Those outwatch teams like Houston Houston Overwatch. Outlaws is Overwatch, actually yeah. um is actually Optic Gaming. They just had to rebrand to fit the franchise. 
Uh, Dallas Fuel is actually Team Envious. Again, same thing. They just changed. They rebranded, mm-hmm. so they they were city uh, like localized. Um, the London Skyrockets or, or whatever their name is, that's actually Cloud Nine. Um, huh. So all those teams are are you know the esport organizations that are pretty much in every game, but they just had to rebrand to do the franchising. And these cities actually paid a bunch of money, pretty much bidded on these esports teams to move to their city. So like um, Team Envious, you know, is relocated to Dallas. They relocated relocated all their content creators. Their their um, uh, their Call of Duty team. Their every team is in those cities, and they have like offices and stuff now. Same with Optic Gaming. They moved to Dallas. Mm. Yeah, it's super serious. They, they own. Yeah, even though they own the Houston Outlaws, they they're centralized in dallas now i don't know how that happened but so optic moved everyone you know their halo team call of duty team content creators uh their gears of war team all of them are all in uh dallas and then every team's pretty much doing the same thing now yeah and and, and, for, and, for, and well let me just go let me just like interject really fast because for people who aren't familiar like with this stuff because what tom is saying is if you guys aren't super into esports is that like you know there's all these teams like optic name a couple other ones we got cloud nine and they go across all these different games so when you see them playing call of duty or league of legends they're at they're playing as cloud nine and what league of legends did is they did it like european soccer style for like anybody you know uk fans out there in europe like where people teams can get relegated and you're not guaranteed to be in the league um but then to bring more like stability to it i think they've switched that since then and and overwatch wanted to do what you said they wanted to have like like here in New Jersey, we have the New York Giants football team, American football, and they wanted to always be that team no matter who the owner is. So there's like a stability and rooting for that franchise when like it's not going to switch to like the Cloud9 team, then the New Jersey team is is Optic team. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's why they did that, right? Mm-hmm. To bring stability to viewers and like saying this town is going to have their own thing no matter who owns it, um, which yeah. definitely kind of diminishes the Optic brand a little bit, right? Because then they have to yeah, not use their name. Right, like uh, uh, so that's the um, um, it was never said like outrightly that that's why they they went with the the way of like just changing the name like rebranding, but because because you're right, that's what Activision wanted to do. They wanted to make esports more localized because the whole premise was to get more people involved, and the way it's set up now, if you're not like big on YouTube, if you're not big in esports, you're never gonna know who these teams are. But now, if there's a team called the Dallas you know, out or um, the Dallas Fuel, and you're walking down the street in Dallas, and you go to your favorite sports bar, and there's a Dallas Fuel game on. Like, you're more inclined to to kind of dig deeper and figure out what it is. So that they that's that was the whole premise on behind why they did that. That's and really I think a lot of the organ, I think the a lot of the organizations fall back on that because, like like you said before, Optic is it's a global brand like because mm-hmm. of all the content that they they're not just an esports team you know they're huge on like content and stuff like that so they have fans from all over the world yeah so, so hector the the owner of optic when he sold because the kind of setting back the way that all these teams were able to do this is they took on huge 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 investments so the owner of the texas ranger or not texas ranger yeah texas rangers the mlb team um bought like 49 percent of optic mm. um 100, 100 Thieves, which is Nate Shot's team, he partnered with the owner of uh, Rock and Mortgage, who's also the guy that owns the Cavaliers. Um, and in the, and, and, and the, the news, team. you guys probably saw Drake, right, got involved, or someone did yeah. with 100 Thieves, right, Tom? Who was that? Uh, yeah, Drake and, like, Drake's manager. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. Yeah, yeah and then also he, Michael he Jordan also invested in a team, so you guys might have seen this on the news. If you guys aren't familiar with this stuff, just throwing out, like, major headlines you guys might have saw. And then, um, so after uh, Overwatch did this, then LCS, uh, you, as you mentioned before, the bottom two teams always got relegated out. So LCS was like, well, this is hard to keep a fan base because your team might get kicked out next year, so now you're no longer an LCS fan. So they went with the franchise model as well. They didn't make the teams change their name, but um, you had teams like uh, the Golden Guardians, um, who's owned by the Garden State Warriors, uh, the Golden State Warriors, bought, same thing. Yeah, yeah, they, they bought right into it. Um, the uh, team Clutch uh, is owned by the uh, Houston Rockets. They bought right into an L because in order to apply, it was thirty-two million dollars just for the application fee to LCS. Basically, like wow. a licensing fee. Isn't that crazy? 
Now, who owns the LCS? Is that Activision owns it, or uh, no, is that just uh, like the Riot, league? No, Riot Games owns yeah, the right. league, and then the LCS is owned by them. They they own everything outright. I mean, they have investors. Like they're owned ten percent by like ten. So cents. Riot Games owns that. Riot Games and, and they're, the they're only running into game. The only sole game that Ryan Games owns is League of Legends. They're, that's the only game they they actively have right now. I heard they're coming out with a new game, but League of Legends is their only product. And honestly, it's but it's that thirty two million application fee goes to League of Legends Riot Games. Um, unless yeah. they've taken on like more investors, yeah. Could unless they blew it up more, yeah. But there's so oh, much wow. money involved behind what they like did the, is like they basically became the NFL and they're the biggest esports thing and like video games. I mean, maybe not, but I think I think they still are the biggest esports league, like value wise. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and that they have that kind of capability because they were the first ones to sorry if I'm going off topic here, but they were the first ones to really like they had like a whole ESPN segment set up, dude. Like they do the mm-hmm. they were the first people to do that stuff where they have like sideline reporters. They got like that's where it shocks that girl got so famous <laughs> and like yeah, all yeah. the desk analysts and then they i mean me and tom watched league of legends in madison square garden in new york city i i, I, I remember i don't, you I don't guys know many that, games yeah. that like I, I think they were the first video game thing to hold a, a thing like that there so it's like yeah they took that shit to a whole nother level to be honest with you i mean for me as a fan like you know tom going over all that like i understand why like teams would be mad like the ones that are global like envious and and optic but in reality it's great for me you know what i mean because yeah I follow games more avidly, but I feel like they probably looked into this and they're like, listen, like people tend to, you know, resonate more with something when it's like they're, they own it more. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I move to California, I'm still going to be a Jets fan, even though the Jets stink, but I'm still going to be a Jets fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's, you know, yeah, you I always you because are gonna have I that. only know, like, even though I'm, I'm, I follow different times, times, I only recognize a couple a couple uh, names like Optic, Cloud9, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like yeah. if, if New Jersey had a team and it was like the New Jersey, like Midway franchise, I, I'm like, I don't know what the mid fra- Midway franchise is, but if it was the New Jersey Generals and yeah. they're always going to be the Generals, like, oh, all right, I'll root for them. They're, in, they're from yeah. New Jersey. So yeah. Yeah, and it's I, catching into that city it helps yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, I agree. Hey, um, I, I think that's eventually where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, It's just like, Dallas is actually building a esports stadium. Like they they dumped like a uh, they're actually working with Optic to do it. They bought like an old like um uh like one of the old stadiums right across from the uh the Texas Rangers stadium and they're totally mm-hmm. changing it into just an esports arena solely for esports like that's it. That's so crazy. I think that's I'm gonna, a cool... ha- I'm gonna have to ask. Um, shout out to Graham Reaper. I don't know if he's been listening to these podcasts or not, but Graham Reaper from the stream. I don't know if you recognize him, BZ Tommy, but I think Cipher will. He's actually working mm-hmm. on the Texas Rangers. They're building a new stadium, so I wonder if he's like involved with any of that stuff. He's like a construction manager. Um, oh, I def- really? Definitely want to ask him. That's about too that. funny. Yeah. Uh, they recorded like a podcast in like the construction site, and you can see like the Texas Rangers stadium like in the background. That's, that's pretty cool. That's crazy, dude. So what? Oh, well, I wanted time to say, like, why do you know so much about? You've been following Optic for so long. I, I you don't have to do it now, but I wanted to hear kind of like, and I also wanted to know why you got so into them, and, and maybe it would give everybody a background of why you follow this stuff so much on um, the esports side. I mean, honestly, I'm not really a. I don't like any other teams. I'm just a fan of their. Because you like Cloud uh, Nine and of League of Legends, right? I'd say, yeah, I'm like a, I'm a Cloud Nine uh, for League of Legends. Um, I would say I like um, I like a hundred I root for hundred thieves more than I root for like optic, but what I've always said from from like day one is I and I'm such a fan for optic solely because of Hector the CEO, and he had the foresight of all this ten years ago, um, and he's been doing nothing but try to get esports to this point. Mm-hmm. Um, he never really did anything just for optic. He's always done stuff for esports. Um, so that's why I'm such a fan of him because I, w- I wouldn't say it's not solely because of him. Obviously there's tons of moving parts, but he's a big reason that like really, I feel pushed esports to what it is today. 100%. Yeah, yeah man. So that, mean, that's why that's why I'm such a big fan of him just for what he, what he's did for the sport. Yeah. It's crazy. I almost wish I was more involved in that stuff, man. Cause I love to see that stuff. Honestly, it sounds so weird, but when we were at that league of legends thing, um, I was just thinking about like video games and how far they've come. We were kind of talking about that before about like how, how far they've come and how many people are playing nowadays. And 
you know, it never was a really thing where you're like getting picked on for like video games because most people our age played growing up. But you could see that that was like in the culture, and now video games are just so big, and it kind of, and even to this day, people still take stuff video games as a joke, you know. Which I get it; it's like a game, but for it's a lot bigger than that. So it is really cool to see it um, this far. So I, I also respect Hector and a lot of those people for taking it to the next level like that. It's kind of uh, kind of cool. And it's it's definitely mixing with like pop culture now, which is going to help, like um like phase clan i'm not sure if you ever heard of them they were like 100 mm-hmm. everyone with... why is everyone always says like phase and everyone's name is phase like people love that i thought it was kind of like a joke they were like a rival because optics started out as a sniper team like back in the day with like youtube montages that's like where they started because that was like yeah. the thing that was like the thing in black because yeah, it's like two. phase three like like 420 no scope that's like people always say but like, it was like control. before black ops 2 wasn't it it was like even before like, the... like yeah Modern Warfare yeah, too, right? it, yeah it, yeah, yeah, that's when yeah. Like scoping started. Um, but uh, I, uh, Black Ops Two, like everyone gives credit for, like that that game is what blew COD esports up. Was Black oh, a hundred percent. That game was a um, magical time in my life. But Phase was like the rival team to Optic. Mm. Um, Phase is probably honestly bigger than Optic right now on a YouTube uh, YouTube spectrum because they mm. like all the Phase members own like mcmansions and like malibu and stuff and they like party with like la celebrities and stuff but like they're all just like call of duty youtubers like it's the weirdest thing ever <laughs> it's crazy dude yeah. and, you're, and you're pretty in that scene because you follow some of them like their channels and the vlogs and stuff like that you, you showed me some of the optic ones before um but I, i've like, never like, really so followed phase, that stuff. what what they just wanted to grow big and big and big so like if you had a presence on youtube like they'd bring you in a phase it didn't matter what you did what Hector always oh, did, really? with Optic, yeah. What Hector always did with Optic was he made it. It was much more like family oriented, and that's like how he treated it. That's why like there's not a million people. Like, yeah, like like Big Timer, who's like uh, I'm not sure if you guys know who that mm-hmm. is. Like, that. he was on he was on their call their COD team. Uh, he retired in Black Ops Two, but like he's still in Optic just because like like what he's what he's done for the brand. Like Hector keeps those people like close. Like it's much more family oriented for him opposed to blowing up as big as you can he's much more about making it genuine and like keep staying true to the brand opposed to like some of these other big teams that are just trying to blow up and, and get as many views and all this as possible yeah and just hire whoever's hot and then like dump them when they're not kind of yeah thing. they're just trying to make money yeah, yeah that's, that's uh i get that yeah it's just crazy how far all that stuff has come it. what's up oh so that i could talk for hours about this but <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, happy. We can definitely I'm, have a second podcast about it. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy that you were. Um, I I knew we were gonna do your origin story stuff, but I forgot that we we could talk about all that. And while you're here, you you made a comment in the last video about like, what do you know about the PUBG esports? Because I really haven't gotten into any of it yet. Do you know anything about it so far? Or, like um, following that stuff? You no, know, pretty much every team that we've mentioned so far is is in PUBG esports. Um, well, I texted I knew, like, you and I said, well, I was like, hey, why doesn't 100 Thieves have a PUBG team? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> um, they're, I mean, because like they're, they're a new organization. Yeah. They're kind of like taking it slow. Um, yeah, but, but, like with this newest investment from Drake, I know um, they put out that they're, um, they're taking a lot of that money. They're content with their esports right now because their first year in LCS, they got second in the spring split third in the summer split and then they went to worlds in their first year in the lcs so mm-hmm. they're pretty like content with that um call of duty this this uh this coming season it hasn't started yet for uh um for black uh black ops uh they switched from four person competitive to five person competitive so yeah. that made like a like they call it like roster mania like just uh, like yeah everyone was every trying to pick up players yeah, so they were able to lock down like a pretty solid Call of Duty team as well. Mm. So he's saying that they're taking a lot of this money uh, from Drake, um, and they're focusing on like content creators. So I know they just picked up like this girl. Uh, I'm not too familiar with their name, but she's like a huge like Twitch streamer. So that's what they're. I think they're just content with like the one or two teams that they have right now uh, before expanding out into other esports. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I think like the content creating is is cool for them, but I almost feel like uh, in the LCS it doesn't have a place. Like they should focus, like you know. But I guess the money is just not there yet. That could just be teams and like playing sports. Well, but well, they have to have like content creation. Well, in that the League of Legends, like the LCS, like, really well. 
Well, in the League of Legends, they I, it's not that big. It's more just pro stuff. But I think in the other those a lot of those other franchises, like Tom said, like FaZe and and some of the other ones use social media as kind of like their second source of like income and backing. Which I, yeah, I know you're yeah, saying. yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I mean, I get that. There's like different like sectors. Like they they have like their esports teams, and then they have like their content creator teams, and like that encompasses like like Twitch streamers, like YouTubers, and so like e- each of these organizations kind of have like like uh like two divisions i guess would is like the best way to ex- explain it like they they have like their pro players and they have like their content creators cuz like yeah. like ninja like you know he's he's famous just as famous as anyone but he's not a pro player he would be like considered like a content creator yeah but he's he wasn't he was like uh he wasn't he an old pro player you said that like wasn't that great at halo weren't you telling me something so like I, that I, yeah he he's he's been in the halo scene since halo 3 he's kind of had like his up and downs throughout the throughout the um the the different halo titles but like yeah when i went to Daytona probably a year and a half ago a year ago or no actually it's probably a year and a half two years ago um i went to a halo 5 event down there and and coached uh one of the teams um like i went out with like him because you know i'm friends with ace and like i i went out with like a group of them ace is a for everybody doesn't know because i'm not super familiar is like a professional halo player right he uh so his older brother is is El, uh, elamite um who was on the original uh not the original but one of the original straight ripping teams back in halo 2 um and then aaron who's ace just kind of grew up in the scene and then became uh, well known in like in the in like halo 3 and on um but i've been close to him for a while so i went out with him at the tournament and like i was like partying with ninja and then like six months later when like Fortnite blew up, like he blew up, and then like now he's now he's Ninja, but yeah. he's been around the Halo. Now he's been around the Halo scene for for years, and has been like a struggling streamer YouTuber for for a while. Yeah, it's kind of funny because he would like play like if you watch like some old videos like when PUBG first came out, he's playing PUBG with like the disrespect, and I was like, oh my god, that's Ninja. <laughs> yeah, and then now he's like, huge. yeah, he's huge. Yeah, because he's like the first one that really just got on that Fortnite thing, and, and well, he like transcended that up. now. Like, yeah, he's kind of like uh, like he played with Drake. Remember that? Like when that was big. Yeah, that, yeah, that blew it up. Well, yeah, actually, I want to talk about it in a second, but just before we leave this topic, I wanted to show you guys because I recognize a lot of these names. I googled like active teams in the PUBG esports wiki. Who knows if this is up to date or accurate? But I, I yeah. recognize a lot of these names from um, League of Legends and so like that. You got Cloud Nine. Dignitas is in here, Evil Genius, a bunch mm. of different names I haven't seen, like Ghost Gaming, which looks like they, cool, they have a cool logo. Optic Gaming is in here. There's one that's called uh, Team Crew that looks like Kairu. Team Envy, which we've seen before. Mm. And Shoot to Kill, which is an old one from like Halo. Is that still the same Shoot wow. to Kill or is that like different, Tom? Is that like a new one? Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's not the original STK. Okay. And that's kind of... um. Uh, People like like in our I'm gonna say our era because I mean we were like in the same age group but kind of going back to what I said before how like all those organizations pretty much start out like on console gaming hmm. like esports has changed a lot and a lot of people were bitter about it obviously not now because it's definitely for the better but kind of like going back to how we were talking about like STK like back like back in the like old days like you know me you Ray and like Steve could team up and then just go enter into like these pro tournaments you know. Um, now it's just, it's not, it's not like that anymore. Like it's, you're on these organizations or like, or that's it. Like that's the only way in. So like, uh, it's not so much like grassroots anymore, which I, I personally was bitter for like a good year or two about that. Um, but obviously now it's, it's definitely for the better. Like, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate though. And we Um, were, we were in a tough age transitioning through all that stuff, right? Like how, like with the internet and also gaming, we kind of missed like out on being, I think we, you mean Tom, you, you and I talked about that not so long ago. Where like we didn't have enough money to like be in a position, or like you know, Hector is like what in his thirties or forties, right? Um, oh he, yeah. So mm-hmm. like we, we didn't he have had, enough. How old is he? Yeah. He's I'm sorry, he he's like he's thirty six, thirty seven. Yeah. It's just like having that, like, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm kind of making excuses. I'm sure we could have done more been in a, in a spot. I mean, there's people who start their own business when they're like five, but I'm just saying like, we were in a kind of awkward stage where like, we weren't like adults and being like, yo, we could start like a business here with this video yeah. thing. And we were like kind of young to be like, you know, and then back then, if you really kept with like being a pro gamer, you were taking a huge risk because it was still kind of like a joke. There's you know? no money in it. Like, yeah. they, um, Hector did like a, on one of his podcasts, they were talking about like, 
the old school like salaries mm-hmm. and like back like black ops 2 how like the salaries were like 500 bucks a month uh, and well, i kind of remember yeah, that dude people were like oh yeah you can make like 200 dollars a month and it was just for like certain months and then you wouldn't even get it like all year i was like what the hell it's crazy now they're like you know like add a couple of zeros to that every month it's like ridiculous Especially yeah i mean like- i think i texted you this right i was like you know we grew up we were like when he was 26 and he was like doing all those videos and content creator we were like 16 years old you know what i mean like we had yeah. this and then when we were transitioning when video games got big like it just was a weird time we definitely were like in between these things a little bit here's a, uh, <clears throat> here's a funny story he's not even the founder of optic he's not even one of the original members of optic hector yeah, I think oh, yeah. That. yeah. Who, well, who is like he uh, uh um i know like like uh like hutch I know you know Hutch. Wait, I still follow Hutch like a, to this day. He's one of the old members of Optic for sure. Yeah, there's a there's a couple other names I can't think of, but like Hector's joined Optic, and then like I kind of said, like I said before, like he had the foresight. So Hector, he was actually like a mortgage banker. He had like a like an amazing job, um, and he uh, his wife got like pregnant, and he was like, I don't want to do this anymore, like. So he like quit his job and just put all of his ducks in a, in in a you know in in one bucket and just like he said he he didn't make money for two years on YouTube but he, like I said he had like the foresight of like these montages and stuff like that and then like the you know the founders of Optic all kind of fell off because they became older and stuff like that and Hector just kind of took it um, and then a lot he of the went, people like, probably laughed and were like it's not going anywhere right now he stayed that's kind of crazy yeah. There's a lot to that story, but that's like, you know, in a nutshell, which I think is pretty, pretty cool because they're probably all, you know, pretty upset about that right now. <laughs> the the yeah, original founders. They, they might not, have, you know, it, if they didn't have the interest to stay in it, then it is what it is. You know, it's one of those things that's hard for you. Either yeah. in it or you're not. It's, it's hard to. Uh... Yeah, unfortunately, it's a hard decision to make when you're in it, you know. Yeah. You don't know the circumstances and everything, too. It's like, I don't have the money to do this. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's it it's just too much of a risk. And even now, even with all this money involved, I mean, what's kind of crazy is it seems very like one percenter, right? It's like only like these huge video game people are making a lot of money, but there's not. It's not like trickling down to like like other leagues or. Oh, hundred like, percent. You know, no. It's like really there's only, no amateurs. No, like, exactly. Where's the amateur like, league at? Yeah, there's no like, and there's really not a clear cut system, right? Like unless you're really deep in this stuff, like I don't even really know where you'd begin at, at, even no. at this point. I mean, the yeah. LCS could be gone in like two years. <laughs> like really it could be no something idea. else take over. Yeah, they're the, the LCS are the only ones trying to fix that problem. So, part of the the deal because Riot actually runs into a lot of the organizations like hate Riot because they have so much control, right? Pretty much every yeah. other every other esport, the um, the developers, the organizations, and the tournaments are all separate. So, like for Call of Duty, you have MLGs, the tournament runners. You have, um, uh, uh, oh my God, who makes Call of Duty? I'm drawing a lot of blanks. Activision. A- yeah, Activision, thank you, is like the developer. And then you have like the organizations and they all kind of work as a team. The problem with LCS is the tournament and the game are owned by the same person. So the organizations yeah. run into a lot of problems. And like, Well, that's why I was they- surprised when you said like the third day all goes to Riot. I was like, wait, wait, wait. It's not like, so an, like an entity and separate entity um, from all this. Like it should be. They're creating like players' unions and stuff like that to kind of fight against um, Riot. But w- the uh, what went along with them franchising was they created the Challenger League. So some of these small organizations were like, hey, like, you know, we have all these players who are about to get screwed because only these teams with all these money can apply to the LCS. So now each organization in the LCS is required to have an academy team, which plays in like the challenger league, which is um, kind of like double a baseball to like MLB. Uh, okay. Uh, so, and then they have a combine every year, mm. just like football. So there'll be your, anyone's open to go to the combine and then the academy teams. No, what are they, 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 play, they just play league of legends and they see how well they do. <laughs> they do, they do yeah. a 40 yard yep. dash with their headset on. <laughs> 40 yard dash to their computer keyboards. <laughs> they have to type hundred words a minute. Up and they put you in like ra- random teams of fives. And then you guys just pretty much play like scrims all day. And then the, the wow. team watch, and then you'll get drafted to the challenger team. 
and then but honestly the just season- listen to all that dude how dope is league of legends bro how dope is it that like you can get drafted one of the crazy things taking a step back to even before all this stuff what one of the coolest things that league of legends ever did is that if you were just a random player and you hit one of the top 100 players you could get contacted mm. by a team and get onto a pro team i'm like dude there was a time when literally like when i was I know everyone hates on me and probably says I'm bad, but like there was a time when we were playing Call of Duty where like I had some disgusting stats and I was like in the top 1,000 of like people in the world. And imagine if you just got called, you're like, hey, dude, it Blitz 5, we want you to be on our Call of Duty team. That would never happen. Still to this day, that can't happen. But League of Legends made that shit happen. And that is the dopest thing of all time, in my opinion. It's I mean, so I sick. think it's cool. I just think the buy in is so high. Oh, well, that, uh, that happened after the fact. But I'm just saying, like, they, oh, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, League of Legends sure. got such a big thing because they turned it from, like, if you were good at a game, you could get, like, it could turn to the next level. And they, they, they yeah. kind of, they, like, bet on themselves and it kind of ended up working. So that's why they got that advantage. I oh, guess. 100%. I just think, like, they shouldn't, like, the buy and, like, I was, like, almost like, whoa, we could start a team. Like, how much money would it take? But you're, like, $32 million is, like, well, because it blew a huge up now. Man. Yeah, but, but it's like yeah. an NFL team. I mean, we can't but, buy an NFL team. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, but the thing is that I don't think that video games have the same amount of money right now flowing in as an NFL team. Well, right? no, they like, do. You, they do. And that's why NFL teams are worth like a billion, though. And League of Legends teams are worth they're like... They're worth a billion. Do you think a, Optic Gaming is worth a billion dollars? The League of Legends teams are worth... Tom probably knows. I mean, they make so much money that these celebrities and stuff are investing. I mean, think about it. Some of them don't know that much about League of Legends. No. They're probably saying, hey, look, no. we're bringing... In a hundred million dollars a year, this team, or maybe more than that. And then do you want to invest 20 million? I just don't, yes. I guess my problem is, is that there's like a, the one game that's like doing this is running it all. I just think it shouldn't be the game. Like this is the, this is the cool dynamic about esports, right? So the sponsors aren't just buying into the team, right? Like NASCAR, right? The cars are, are covered with logos, right? Yeah. Those logos are only seen when that car's on the track. The cool thing about esports is it's that content creation division, right? Those are all, it's free advertisement. It's instead of this company paying millions of dollars for a a TV 30 second commercial, now they're getting, you know, 100,000 views every day on a different video that their link is on in the description. And and the people wear the jerseys and in the bottom left of every video when they stream, it's Geico or whatever, right? Yeah, they're all over that. And they have major investments like Coca Cola. All yeah. those companies are invested in in League of Legends. Yeah, Legend, I don't know. I just don't think that League of Legends. It's just kind of weird to me that the game they get to run the whole thing. But they, I'm saying it's like the, the NFL. NFL runs the show. It's yeah, the but thing. it's not. Uh, yeah, but the NFL isn't a te- It doesn't have a team, or it doesn't have a game that's involved. Like yeah, they make like they, an entity they, they, that their game is football. Yeah, but that's like the one game. It's like they're the entity that controls that game. But like they're also League of Legends is also controlling Call of Duty. Like no, no, the no, no, they're not. That, right? No, 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 no. League of Legends just does LCS. So LCS is only League of Legends, and yeah. then all the other games are their own. Yes. Yeah. 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 League of yeah. Legends just. Well, their own so you only pay thirty-two million dollars just for LCS, just for League, just to get into yeah. the League of Legends League now, as of last year, because it already blew up. This is after like years of it blowing up, you know. It's but what about been... Call of Duty? Like, how much is it getting Call of Duty? Like, if you want to start a seasonal, like a New York <laughs> New York Devils team, the Call of Duty. So now, what Call of Duty does is, and that's what I was saying before. Yeah. So now, every other esport, there's there's three parties, right? There's the organizations, mm-hmm. there's the developers, and then you have the league, which is mainly like MLG is is what runs the the um the yeah. tournaments. So what they do is is They've come down to a a, a system called Pro Points. Mm-hmm. So every player, whenever they place a, a, a certain amount of, you know, um, whenever they place a certain placing, like second, third, fourth, whatever, mm-hmm. they keep Pro Points. So if a, um, so when like these roster manias happen, like the points go with that player. It doesn't stay with the organization. Uh, so if you okay. want to if you want to come in and like say we us three pulled a bunch of money together somehow and and we bought five pro players that were free agents Mm -hmm. as long as we had enough pro points to be in the league i'm not sure what that that number that threshold is but as Mm -hmm. long as we can accumulate enough of those pro points then we we can go into the the pro league uh well that way i like that way that's kind of cool that's a good way to do it i think yeah because then you're valuing a player and like i think that's a lot more fair and they and then they still kind of have like like there's uh 
there's like a, an open bracket that you can go into. Like us three can make a, a team of four. It's, so it's still kind of traditional to where you can make a team of four go into the open bracket. And then it's like the if final team well. in the open bracket gets gets mm-hmm. put into like the 16th spot of like the – So like the pro teams like don't start playing until like Saturday, but the open bracket opens up like Thursday. And then like the oh, top okay. team will so that's cool. make – Yeah, and okay. that's how most – most of the console esports are still done. Okay, so I was a little confused about the LCS thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just League thought of Legends, LCS. Like... Just, yeah, I thought Lee, like LCS, everyone just kind of was like, "All right, we're gonna just like LCS won't come." Oh, I, I guess see. I, I see. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. for some reason, like they were like, "All right, well, League of Legends already has a good thing going. Like let's just all use that <laughs> format uh, and we'll okay. just all be in, like no, we'll no, just no, call yeah, it the yeah. LCS, I gotcha. like NFL." Yeah, it's no, kind of no. weird. Yeah, yeah, it, that's just for League of Legends. So there, there's the LCS. Which is NA and uh, Europe, and then there's like the the LPL, which is like the the Korean version of it. Then there's like the LKL, which is like the Chinese. I didn't even know um, that. I thought it was all the same. Oh wow! And then there's like a South American one, which is all owned by Riot, but it's different leagues in each continent. Oh, okay. And, then, and that's how they do the worlds at the end of the year. Like the top three teams from every region. Every, each of those leagues send three teams to worlds and then yes yeah, so that's what and that's what, that, what tom and i went to was the north american finals so all the team in north america and then the best three teams the uh, best three teams from yeah. each region get sent to worlds and that's when uh, I, I feel like league of legends got a lot of press when they held that world's tournament in the olympic stadium in south korea and like imagine dragons played that's like when they got so much oh my god yeah. they filled up like that i remember that big video. stadium there was, there was that and then that's when um uh the year before that, they held it in the Staples Center, and they sold out the Staples Center in seven minutes and crashed like oh, the I remember ticket that. master. Like what? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that sending someone sending me that link because they they knew I played League, like not someone who played video games. And I'm like, that's crazy. Seven minutes. Like the LA Lakers had like they like put out like some stat. Like the LA Lakers have like never done that, and that's like their home court. <laughs> Sorry, nerds are online, sweaty palms, like typing in the League of Legends tickets. Right <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. That's crazy. Did, <laughs> people are just flying across the country to watch people play video games. Man. Pretty crazy. <laughs> 2018, man. 2018. Yeah. Things have changed. Um, like League of Legends, Call of Duty, Counter Strike, still hu- huge. Um, Definitely in South America too, for sure. Uh, like I know op- optics got gotten into Counter Strike, um, League of Legends, Halo. I'm sorry, League of Legends, Call of Duty, Counter Strike, Gears of War is actually like blown up, which is really weird. How old like that game is? Yeah, I really? mean, I guess um, Gears of War Four is it they're playing? They're like blown up, like big. Like Optic actually bought a second team. What? Because um, so weird. Next- Mexico has its own Gears of War league now. So. What? Yeah, so like the the New York the uh, NA teams just go down there to compete, but now it's gotten so big in Mexico that Mexico is like, no, we want our own league now. It's like a lot of teams are are like buying secondary teams down there. So now there's Optic Mexico, um, which is like the the Mexican (laughs) uh, war team. I don't know. Like I said, I can go on forever. Wow. Yeah. I know there's so much stuff going on. I think, I think that's good. I think maybe we've been keeping these at like an hour and we're over that now. I was going to let it just keep rolling, but I think that's so much information that I was thinking like, man, if someone doesn't know that much about esports, their head's probably like spinning right now with all this information. I mean, my head's a little, I'm a little lightheaded. <laughs> a lot of information, Bad. but <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I'm glad you went over. It. And I think for people who aren't like into it, maybe that would spark some interest or maybe it's, it's helpful learning. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think, or if you're into that stuff, uh, let us know too in the comments down below. Um, at least on YouTube, that is. You can leave comments. I don't know about anywhere else. But I think it's good, man. I'm glad we had you on the podcast. We'll have to have you back on maybe like a part two. We could talk more esports stuff. And once we learn more about um, PUBG esports, too, we can talk about that. Fortnite doesn't have anything like that, do they? Before oh, we- last, uh, last year, when like uh, over the like past year or two, a lot of these big teams started buying into like Battle Royale esports because like you know they, they kind of realized that it was picking up steam yeah so for a while what a lot of these teams were doing they were they were both competing in PUBG and fortnite tournaments the same team so they would have like a battle royale team and then they would compete in different battle royale games yeah and then they kind of fun, found out that like fortnite is just doing its own like community events with like they're focused more on like the streaming content creators opposed to where PUBG is actually trying to be like an eSport. Um, so they've kind of split now to where like the nin- the ninjas and stuff are kind of 
uh, like Courage is another big one. Um, there's like TSM Myth, who's like a big uh, Fortnite guy. They're just kind of Fortnite's just kind of taking like the streaming, like streaming celebrity route. Um, and then like they'll run like the Doritos Bowl, where like just it, every weekend it's like streamers just get together and like make different teams. So like Ninja would be on like Courage team one weekend, and like next weekend he'd yeah, be on, yeah, like, they're like making their own weekend. random like tournament kind of thing not even like a tournament yeah, yeah. just for like a oh. day or a weekend yeah kind of like dr disrespect does the code yeah. red tournament yeah but he doesn't do Fortnite. i think he doesn't really play Fortnite. It seems like it much anymore yeah and uh blackout blackout is actually kind of mimicking what Fortnite is doing which is pretty interesting so yeah. a lot of yeah so i think the buy-in for blackout just isn't as good so but that's kind of what's going on with that interesting and all right and we should have mentioned this earlier but before you leave what have you been playing and you haven't been gaming a lot but have you been playing blackout or PUBG? and let me know if you go to play PUBG. I i count share with tom and i had to change my password to my account so you might not be able to play <laughs> <next time. laughs> let me know if it works um yeah definitely with my, uh, <laughs> uh I, I really don't game during the week anymore just because of how busy i am um but uh i just been kind of grinding out black house 4 still i i still enjoy the game um mostly the multiplayer or or um multiplayer blackout. um okay. it's what it's what i wished halo 5 was because halo 5 was supposed to revive the halo series and it just didn't happen i feel like black I thought ops it did. i thought of, it did a little bit yeah. not to get into all that it did it, 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 yeah yeah don't get me started but <laughs> okay part two part two of the podcast you know what there should be some halo news coming on so i'll have to come, have you come back on for the halo news but keep going um but i definitely think black ops 4 is reviving uh reviving the series it's definitely it definitely is on the esports side of it i know like you know but it's definitely reviving because black ops i'm sorry black call of duty esports was kind of taking a big hit with these with like black ops 3 and like war 2 yeah um but it's definitely reviving that scene so it's it's keeping me interested uh on the weekends when i have time to game that's, so that's pretty much it it's just black ops. that's true i think no matter what your opinion is of of call of duty and i know andrew and i and a lot of people on the stream have been playing a lot of PUBG and stuff like that uh, there's still a lot of people playing call of duty but more people from the page are, have been playing PUBG. you definitely can't deny the fact that like call of duty was declining so bad to to the point where like in world war ii you're right people were like not a lot of people were playing that game the it seemed like the competitive scene was pretty pretty low for that so this is definitely definitely a resurgence to some extent. We'll just see how long it lasts, I guess, for Call of Duty. And, 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 and yeah. Activision is really supporting it a lot because Activision actually, um, they they have the, it's kind of weird. I don't know exactly how it works, but Activision runs the CWL, which is the COD World League, but it's mm. it's run by MLG. So like I, I don't really know how like that dynamic works. Oh, interesting. Like, well, they, no, because kind of, Activision bought MLG. Mm. <laughs> That's why, dude. Oh yeah, I think I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure they bought MLG. I think they did. Yeah, but um, it's it's good because Activision is kind of the I'm not gonna say the first developer because Riot is, but they're really pumping a lot of stuff into uh, esports, and that's kind of why they designed the game the way they did with like no campaign things like that. So yeah, I'm I'm happy overall about that. And again, like we said, that's a be a whole other podcast. But yeah. yeah, they're definitely doing it. Because they know that this is just going to turn into a, like advertising in a way, you know, having a big MLG league will just make more people want to buy the game, play the game, and stuff like that. If they have a team they follow and stuff like that, just in that regards, I feel like yeah, they definitely sure. do probably a lot of market research in that area. Yeah, I'm sure there's yeah. a ton. I'm sure there a lot of smart people that figure stuff out. So. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I guess I guess with that, um, we'll wrap it up here. You guys good with that? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about Halo. I'm just kidding. Nah, we'll, we'll have you back on. We'll talk plenty of Halo stuff for all you Halo fans out there. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there that are big Halo fans, and uh, definitely I appreciate you coming on, Tom. That was fun. We it looks like we made it yeah, like we're sure. like an hour, ten hour, fifteen minutes into the podcast. So this mm-hmm. is great. This is definitely a good one. This is our first one recording through Discord, so hopefully the audio ended up working out okay for everybody. We'll see after the fact if i'm crying after this it's because it didn't work but i think yeah. it should be okay because we all record our own audio and um appreciate ta- you guys have me on what no yeah okay. definitely need you back we need your expertise yeah of course man yeah we definitely yeah. need you back and it was a lot of fun just to chat it out in yeah, the final circle like uh the you know, like, 
like Fox News as the White House correspondent. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do that. And now to Cairo in uh, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> and, and, and DZ Tommy, our, our, our uh, esports correspondent. I love that. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. That's great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, what? so where um, do you want to like promote some of your stuff on here? Tom, or you want me to do it in the intro of the video? Because you got some stuff going on, social media stuff that I feel like you should um, put at the end of this podcast. We'll make it like a real podcast. It's cool. Like, yeah. It's uh, so again, I just want to say thank you for having me on. It's definitely uh, good good to talk about video games, um, especially with you guys. Back, But going back to the origins, right? We've been gaming together for a while. Yep. Um, but uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at BZ underscore Tommy. Um, also have the uh, apparel company Bravo Zulu Co., um, which you can find on Instagram, just like that, one word, Bravo, Zulu, CO, no underscores, and it's just all one word. Um, or you can listen to my podcast, The Midwatch, which is on Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. Um, and it's just a cool platform for a bunch of war heroes to tell their story. So if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, definitely go check that out. Oh, yeah, and uh, that's a great podcast. And by the way, we didn't even mention, our, yeah. our brother over here, BZ Tommy is in the Navy, a current active member of the military. So shout out to you. Thanks for doing what you do. And uh, that's kind of yeah. what the podcast is sort of about. So it's a really good podcast if you guys want to listen to his stuff or support him. I'll obviously link all that stuff everywhere. Um, I've mentioned it in other videos in the past. Um, so definitely check it out. He's got a lot of cool stuff on there. And your podcast is getting pretty legit, man. Got it for yeah, a sponsor. Okay. You're on iTunes. Like, it's going very we well, announced man. Our, uh, I'm annou- uh, I recorded a podcast last night. Um, oh, really? probably going to go live tomorrow. Um, but it's going to be the first podcast that's, uh, actually like sponsored by it. Incredible. Dude. Not mine. I love Ooh. that. I love that. Dude. I haven't even, uh, I didn't get to listen to the last one you just posted. I'm, I'm one behind, but I do listen to it. I like them. I always text you too. I usually text you. I'm like, Oh, that was a good I do yeah. appreciate that. It's pretty, it's pretty, it felt like the first time you texted me, it was actually pretty cool. Cause I was like, I re- like you're the like, the last person I figured that would like listen to like. Well, <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I listen but to a lot of podcasts. I have a long drive, so like it's nice to have like something besides music. You know what I mean? So like it, when podcasts are crappy, it sucks because I just turn right back on the music, like yeah. if it's boring. So your but yours I can listen all the way through, which is good. Wow, I definitely need to. Uh, I need to get better at like having them actually be like conversations. Like I feel like I just kind of, I'm like the. Like why they take a break, like a breath from their story. Like I just asked them another question. Like it's 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 more of just like a story time than like an actual conversation. But I'm I'm learning as I go. No, that's fine. I th- I like it. So I, th- far. I, think I think some of those guys got evolved. like really great stories. So it's it's kind of yeah. hard. I bet I bet it's hard to uh, navigate that. Yeah, and it's gonna evolve over time. You know what I mean? It'll get more fluid fluidity exactly. to it. You know. Yeah. What's behind is I don't want I don't want it to be about me at all. Um, kind of I kind of mentioned it in the one I recorded yesterday. Like. Back in the day, like, you know, these these vets from, like, Vietnam War II, like, their story wasn't getting getting told unless, like, Discovery Channel or History Channel came into, like, a big production to, like, put it on TV. Yeah. But, you know, now we have the ease of, of recording a podcast for, you know, buying a $50 mic and then hitting record on your computer. Like, it's just so easy. So I just kind of want to use the, the ease of technology now to get these stories out there that may have never been told otherwise, you know. Yeah, and I think the best part, mm-hmm. man, the reason why I like your podcast so much is even like a, a friend that we know, Dan, like getting to hear their stories because everyone, there's anyone who served or has been overseas. And, and I mean, there's a lot of great stories out there in the world, even if you're not in the military for heroic things. But there's so many just what you want to say, like your average person that's not like a like super famous war hero that have incredible stories. And your podcast kind of highlights these people that you normally, like you said, you're not going to have a TV show made about our friend Dan, really. You know what I mean? Unless something really um, crazy happens to him, you know? So it's like you get a chance to hear all that stuff. And I think it's a great message. And I don't know. I, I appreciate listening to that stuff too. So I, I definitely think if you guys are listening to this podcast, you should check that out if you're interested. I uh, definitely recommend it. And great job with that so far, Tom. Well done, sir. Well done. Yeah, for sure, Tom. Yeah, I appreciate that. Of course. Of course. All right. So with that, guess we'll end it i'll link all that stuff down where we can once we finalize the name hopefully we'll have this up on itunes really really soon i think we'll probably be going with the final circle maybe i'll post it up on youtube see what you guys think and then i'll put i'll create a logo put up an application to itunes i'll have tom help me we'll do all that stuff and we'll get this situated so it's easier to listen to and you guys can have a different platform other than youtube and podbean and with that you can find me on twitter at blitz5 
And you guys got any last words? Any no, thanks for making it to the final circle with us. Bam. <laughs> I like that. Dang. 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 All right, guys. Take it easy. <laughs> Later. Later.